Hello and welcome to this recording on Azure Cloud Threat Intelligence using Honeypot. So first some disclaimer. So this recording is more of an how-to video than an in-depth explanation. So one of the reasons why I started giving this um, type of disclaimer uh, is because I do make a different um, kinds of content and there is a place for different kinds of content. So there are some contents where I focus heavily on how to deploy something, how to configure something, it's more of like an how to type, which is this video. And there are other kinds of contents that I create where I go into details and explanation and I go in depth and trying to explain a particular topic or technology or concept. Um, so, because sometimes I do get comments around uh, maybe I'm talking about how to configure IPsec and I get comments around or oh, why are you not talking about in depth of how cryptography works because that's an how to video it's not about going in depth so just to let you know this is an how to video um, that being said I will still give some brief explanation where necessary um, just to clarify some of the things that I am doing so what am I going to be doing in this video? This video, I will be talking about deploying Onipods into your Azure environment for threat intelligence. So the environments that we'll have at the end of this recording will look like what you're currently seeing on the screen. We'll have uh, a server, which will be a MHN server, and you understand what that means in a minute. Um, which will all be Ubuntu. All the servers that we'll be using today are going to be Ubuntu and the version I'm going to be using is version 14.04 LTS and that's the version that I'll be using for all of them. And then we'll have all these different Honeypots deployed in different regions that we'll use to capture information for threat intelligence and then that will be fed back to the central server. So, um, other thing that I want to mention is that I know some of you watching this video may be familiar with the concept of Onipot, why some of you may not. Um, and the, the easiest way to put it is this, Onipot are about threat intelligence. So there are a lot of threats out there on the internet, if you're hosting anything in the internet, there are a lot of threats within your own network. Right. So from generic botnet that scan every publicly available um, IP addresses, uh, even um, botnets that target cloud providers, public cloud providers like um, Amazon and Azure that we're demonstrating today um, or Google Cloud. Because what happens with these public cloud providers is they do make their publicly available IP addresses um, reachable via an API. So it's very easy for um, to have that programmatic interface where you grab a list, an updated list of all these publicly available IP addresses and just run a scan on them and scan for vulnerabilities and then start to attack them. But where Onipot comes in is we need visibility into this. We need to be able to see what, what that looks like, right? What kind of threats are reaching our environment, successful or not? What kind of threats are coming into our environment? Um, understanding the generic botnet threat, like what we've mentioned, scanning every public level of IP, or are they targeted attacks that are specific to our organizations or whichever organizations we're working in or whichever organization has the environment? Um, that you're, you're looking after. So that's what this is about. That's what Honeypots are about. And that's what I've called is Azure Cloud Threat Intelligence using Honeypots. So having said that, you may think, well, that probably should be as easy as me taking, um, is, you know, an Honeypot and just deploying it into an environment and that's it, all, all done, all quick. Yeah, well, <laughs> that is true. And you will see that that is true from what we'll demonstrate today. But the issue is that historically with um, Onipot is that they've usually been very complex to deploy. Um, in times past, um, you, you needed to have an intermediate to advanced Linux knowledge before you can get any form of Onipot working. And then to think about it, there's not just one type of um, Onipot that covers everything, right? There's loads of different types that do different things that expose different vulnerabilities, that, that type of stuff. So, which means you need at that level of um, intermediate to advanced Linux knowledge to be able to get this working. But what I'm going to be demonstrating um, is something called the Modern Onion Network, MHN. 
uh, which is a very, very great um, project that has simplified the deployment of Onipods into an environment so we can begin to gather threat intelligence. Um, so that being said, um, actually, before I go forward, let me quickly bring up the GitHub page for the MHN um, Modern Oni Network project. So you can see that maintained by a company called uh, Threat Stream. And you can see that's the MHN project. You can see the scripts that it uses, the server. And there's information on how you do the deployment even on, on that page. And this will be in the description below. So that being said, let's get into it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'll, I'll start first. Actually, before I do that, I'll bring up here my um, OneNote and I'll go through some of the things I'll be doing. So first thing I'll do is I'll deploy an Ubuntu server. I've said all the versions that I'll be using today will be 14.04, um, deploy my Ubuntu server. This will be this main server here that will serve as the MHN server. So it will begin to be the point of control for the deployment of our Honeypot. If we want to deploy an Honeypot, we deploy using the script that's automatically generated by this server over here. That's very cool. So um, after doing that, I'll go run through the old deployment process, which takes a long time. Um, so there'll be a lot of pauses in this video. And after finishing that, I'll go ahead and deploy the Onipod, and then the Onipod fully gets the connection back to the main server, and then we'll begin to get some intelligence. Okay, let's get to it. Um, first thing I'll do, bring up my Azure environment. And what I'll do here is I'll go into new, and I'll search for Ubuntu. So I'll try to be as quick as possible here, because uh, it's a long, and journey that we're going on. So select my Ubuntu server, click on create, um, give it configuration. So I'm going to call this my MHN server. I'll leave the add this type of SSD um, just because I'll be destroying everything afterwards. This is not going to be staying. So my username, I'll leave that as Azure admin and I'll set my password. I'll select the subscription that I'll be using in my case. I'll be using my IT Pro Cloud Essentials Benefit subscription. So I'll leave that and I'll set the resource group, create a new one, which I'll call the Thread Intelligence Resource Group, and I'll leave the locations to West Europe. So I'll click OK to that. That's going to validate that. So actually, what that's doing, I'll bring up um, portal.azure.com and I'll bring up um, actually. So I'll come back to this in a minute. I'll show you what, I, what I'll be doing. So um, going back to this one, I'll select my virtual machine site. So the recommended one that I, I use is this um, V3, D2S V3, which is two CPUs and eight gig of RAM. I think the recommendation on MHN, if I'm correct, is two CPUs and four gig of RAM recommended for the server. But hey, you, you can use something smaller if it's just for testing. So in this case, I'll select this one and I'll click select on this. Um, I won't make too much changes. I've already set up the availability zone preview, but I won't be using that. Um, I'll just essentially leave the default here. Um, I will disable monitoring. Again, this is for testing. I won't be configuring anything more than that. I'll click OK. And validation passed. I'll click on create and then it's going to create the server. So that's going to take a while. So what I'll do is I'll quickly pause this recording. And then when we're back, um, I'll proceed to configure this MHN server. Um, so see you in a minute. Okay, so the MHN server has successfully deployed. So what I'll be doing next is I'll be connecting to HIT via SSH and then we'll be doing the setup. So I'll get a public IP address there, connect to HIT, click on open, accept that, and log in with my username that I set in during the deployment. And I'll also enter in the password that I set during the deployment. And what I'll do is I realize that this may be not as clear for you. So I'll make this bigger, bigger font, and make the colors also more clearer. So that's better. Okay. 
let's make them bigger so here we have just have an ubuntu server let's go through the process of setting up our mhn server on it so first thing i'll do is i'll gain um, privilege access so sudo su dash um so if I were installing a newer version of Ubuntu, um, so you may have the question, why don't I use a newer version? It's because um, the instructions work well with this version of Ubuntu. If you go for a newer versions, there are certain customizations that you will need to make, which again requires um, you know, an intermediate to advanced level of Linux knowledge. And you know, the whole point here is to show you that you can do this, um, not to go deep into Linux. So let's install git on this. So if I do apt get install git, that's why, so I don't have to accept all the time. So that's going to go pull down git and install it. And then if I do git, I see my the git version is 1.91. That's good. So the next thing that I'll do according to the instruction is I'll go I'll do cd um, opt and in the cd opt directory then I'll clone the project that I just showed you from the github website so I'll go ahead and clone that project so that's what I'm doing here so git clone the project and again these instructions that I'm doing following in here you go to um, this page you see the instructions there the github page and I'll put the link below so you can see it's all there so I'll minimize that git clone and it's going to clone that and then if I do a list I should see that project there which is the um, it's on the MHN there okay so let's let's um, move further here so what I'll do is I'll change directory to MHN and then we only run a script if i do a list under that you can see that there is the scripts for install and um, .sh and um, which you can we can use vim to read if you want to but all i need to do is to just run um install.sh so get ready because this could take about 30 minutes or even longer to complete and while it is running it's going to prompt us for some configuration settings like if we want to enable debug mode if we want the, um, the email server that it's going to install on it if we want it to use tls ssl that kind of configuration information so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and um start that but i'll pause the video here and when it gets to the point where it's going to ask me to input those configuration settings i'll resume the video and continue recording so see you i think this is probably going to take about 30 minutes or see you in about 30 minutes hello yeah so finally got to the place where we're prompted to input the configuration settings that i talked about so first thing is asking if we want to run in the bug mode I'll click yes because this is for um, information. Um, super user email, I'll put in my email address. Super user password, I'll put in a password there. Uh, I'll generate random password. And let's put that in and repeat the password. So it's it telling us what the server base URL will be, and that will be the public IP of the Azure server that I deployed. So I'll go ahead and click um, and just accept the default. And then it's going to also prompt for the Honeymap URL. So this is where if you have a custom name, we can put that in here. But I'll just leave it as the IP for now also. So I'll go enter mail server address i'll accept the default for this mail server port i'll accept the default use tls i'll say yes use ssl i'll say no mail server username i'll put in a username i'll call this is your admin mail server password put in the randomly generated password and i'll leave the sender as the default and it's going to tell me the path for the log file is var log mhn mhn.log which you can make a note of because that could be useful for you later I'll go ahead and present it to that and then it's going to continue with the rest of the process now as part of this process it's going to get to a point where it's going to begin to import um, different hyps ids rules and i think there's about 19,000 of them and again that takes a while 
to to complete so you can see downloading from rules and it's going to start downloading some of the rules so that's about 19,620 rules that it's going to try to download and import and that will take a while so again <laughs> get ready could, could be waiting for up to 30 minutes so why this is going on what i'll quickly do is i'll go back to uh, my mhn server 01 in azure and i'll go under the networking um, tab here so the reason that I've done that is because by default, because it's an Ubuntu server, Azure, um, the default network security group only had it port 22 for SSH. But I'm going to be connecting to this server via HTTP or HTTPS also. So I'll go ahead and add those. So HTTP, I'll leave the priorities that and I'll go ahead and click OK. And I'll add another one for HTTPS. I'll go ahead and change the priority. Um, so click OK to that to add HTTPS. But as part of that also, I had two other ports. One port 3000, which we use for the only map URL that we saw earlier. So I'll go ahead and leave custom, but this time I'll put in TCP port 3000 and I'll click OK to that. I'm sorry, I need to change the priority to something else and i'll click ok and then i'll have the final one which will be port 10,000. now the reason why this is important is because if i go back to our diagram all these only ports that will be deploying into different regions will be reporting back information that they gather to the mhn server which will be the central server um, the communication goes over port 10,000. So that's why I need to add this one here. If you get to a point where you finish your deployment and then you go to your image and the deployment successful, you go to your MHN server, you'll see nothing. That may be the reason something is blocking this port. This port is required for that communication. So I'll leave port 10,000 and I'll click, oh, oh sorry, keep <laughs> making the same mistake. Let's change that to different priority and click OK to that. So. While that's rolling, let's go back to this again. It's going to take a while. I'll be back when it's completed. And welcome back. So that was much quicker than I expected, actually. So here we are. It's asking if we want to integrate uh, the MHN server with Splunk. So again, this is another very good feature of the MHN server that just makes deployment and configuration to work. Because and some people do use Splunk for data and log aggregation in the environment. If you want to integrate Splunk with um, MHN, it's really straightforward and easy step to do. I'll, I'll add the link in the description below that gives information how to do this. But for now, I won't be. I will be doing a video very soon talking about Splunk though. So be ready for that. So I'll click no, I'll, I'll enter no to that. So you can also integrate it with um, ARK if you use that. Um, again, I'm not doing that now. So I'll press no for that and then wait for it to complete. So I'll pause the video again and I'll be back once it's done. And the installation is completed now. So that's very nice. So let, let's see what that actually looks like. So if I go ahead and bring up my environment, um so if i go to overview and get the public ip and if i go http my public ip presented to that and here we go i can put in my username i can put in my passwords to log in now https is not configured by default so if i do https and I press enter, that's not going to work, it's not configured by default. So if you want to use the HTTPS, um, we will need to configure it. Um, so again, it's a very good idea for me because I don't like the idea of sending any form of password. Even though it's a randomly generated password, I probably would not use after this demonstration. Um, I could just take the easy part of just going HTTP and just demoing what I need to show you using HTTP. But I know some of you, if you try to follow the HTTPS um, instructions um, that, that I'm going to post again. So let me bring that up. So there's an um, information here, which I'll put in the description on how to run MHN over HTTPS. If you're trying to follow this and you're not... You don't know your way around your Linux, you may struggle with this. So I'll just run through this quickly for you. So the first thing that I'll do in order to uh, configure this for HTTPS, I need a domain name. In this case, I'll be using a public one. You, you can use a 
you know um, you can just set up um, use the IP address and then use a um, self-generated um, certificate if you want to but in this case I'll go for the proper way domain names are not expensive these days so I'll just go ahead and already have my domain name anyway so I'll sign in and what I'll be doing in this case is I'll get my IP address and I'll point it to so let's go for one of my domains which is this one and what I will do is let's go for manage DNS and on the manage DNS I can find the domain name there I can click on edit so I want to use DOMHN server um, dot D okay or the dot XYZ that will be um, the address for this so if I do HTTPS D dot D okay or the dot XYZ so I need to configure this anyway so let's go back so what I'll do is I'll point my public IP address of the MHN server to this. So let's go grab that. So I'll copy that and I'll paste that here and I'll save that. And that's been saved. The other thing that I'll need is I'll need certificates. So this is um, a very, very useful website called SSL for free. It ties into let's, let's encrypt in the back end. And you can just use domain verification using TXT to verify. So I've already done this in advance, so I don't need to do this anymore. But if you're looking to get a free certificate, it has a very quick and easy way to do that. Again, maybe I'll have a video on how to use this. Um, so moving further because i have the certificate let's let me try to follow these instructions really quickly for using https so first of all is i'll need to copy my certificate but the private key and the certificate i'll need to copy them into this location on the server so what i'll do is i can go back here yeah. And if I do a list on this, you see that it's currently empty. So again, remember we have two files. So we have the um, file that contains the private key and then the certificate that contains the public key. So what I'll do here is I'll just, um, the files that I got from SSL for free include a CLT file and a .key file. So I'll start with the CLT file first of all. So create one. Um, and then copy the contents of the certificate into this. So I've um, remember that the extension that I give to this one is dot CLT. So also remember to put in the beginning and the end of the certificate there, and then I'll save this file. And then if I do do the list again. I have this one. So now I will create the file that contains the private key. So if I go back, I'll just change this to dot key. I'll present it there. Again, hi for insert, and let's get the private key pasted here also. And then go ahead and save this. And then if I do the list again, I should have my two certificate files here so the next thing that i'll need to do now is i'll need to create certain configuration files so all these configuration files that i mentioned i will need to create them on the server so some of them like splunk because i'm not doing splunk integration i may not need but i'll still go ahead and do it anyway so that's very easy to do so let's start with the first one this file so let's go Let me just show you the content before proceeding. First of all, list. You can see it only has it this default. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and create the first one. Yeah, and then I'll copy the content that we have over here. I'll copy them into here. 
and now save that. So because this is the one for HTTP, there's no need to make any configuration change. So that's the first one. So if I do the list again, got the first one. So I'll do the second one now, which is the HTTPS, which this is where we we'll now need to specify a certificate files that we created earlier. So I'll paste the options there. I'll paste the, video, the content there. But then what I need to do is I need to point this to my certificate file. So the first one point into the certificate that contains the private and the public key. And then the second one contains the path. And so with the name of the path where the private key resides. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so I get if I go to the upper one here and then if I go to the lower one I change that to dot key so that's the name that I gave the files that I created earlier the two um, certificate and the private key so I put both of them there and then I save this and this is essentially what I'll need to do for the other um, part. So if I do the same for onimap HTTPS, copy the content and make the modification. Same one that I just made now, the ones that I need to make. So if I do a paste, let's go back to the lines. Let's edit that. So and change that to dot key. Save that and then the final one again, which I really don't need to do because I'm not doing Splunk integration. But I'll still show you Hanoi. Let's copy this. Okay. So here's the final one that we're doing. Yeah, save that. And that's all saved now. So all I need to do is to restart the web server which is using the NGINX. So I'll need to restart that now. Yep, and that's been restarted. So now let's go back to try to connect to my server. And here we go. Now I'm connected, no certificate warning over HTTPS. So now I feel more comfortable putting in the password. And the password that we're putting in, the email that we're putting in here is the email that we configured during the setup process and the password that we configured during the setup process also. So that's what we're putting in here and I'll click on login and now I'm logged in. So this is really cool. Now we're logged into our MHN server. How good we can view the honey map if we want. Um, so it's over there. Um, but again, if I go back, so here is our MHN server. And that's this part of the configuration all done now. So now we want to now use our MHN server to start deploying our honey pot. So what we need to do, it makes it really easy, is if I go under deploy here, I can select which only port I want to deploy. So you can see there are different ones. So mainly for Ubuntu con port, Ubuntu word port, shock port, POF and all this. And all these are different kinds of only port that have different purposes. So again, I won't go into details because of time. Uh, it is an auto video. 
um, Ubuntu WordPod. WordPod is kind of like a WordPress um, Onipod, right? Exposes, um, you know, WordPress vulnerabilities, and you can even extend using plugins. And ShockPod exposes vulnerability for the, the popular shell shock um, vulnerability, right? And POHF, um, P0HF is just for fingerprinting connections that are coming. So well, it's not generating traffic, but using certain headers to determine um, the origin of requests. So Vicata, which is um, an IPS IDS similar to SNOT, similar, and, and then Kauri, and um, what is the other one? Kipo. So Kipo is not here, but Kauri, um, which is more of like an SSH and so things like brute force attack and all, all those kind of stuff. Amon is not really being developed that much anymore. So again, you have all this, and I think you can even extend this if, if you wanted to. Uh, but you have all these, and again, let's say I want to deploy um, um, what part to one of my honey pots. All I need to do is take this deployment command and run it on that um, on that honey pot, and it's going to complete the whole setup. I don't need to go to the process of setting up all this by myself and typing all this and doing all this. All I need to do is just get this, and then I can do the same for whichever one I'm deploying. I just get the um, deploy command and just run it on those. Now, because I've got four that I want to deploy here, right? I've got four, and I want to deploy many of the different honey pots that we see over here. I want to deploy many. On, on those um, onipods, uh, or sorry, on those um, servers themselves that I'll be using for the onipod, it's going to be really difficult for me to just be doing all this manually. So what I'll do is I'll just generate a script, uh, and I'll show you how I generate that, that kind of script in a minute. So let me bring up a script that I've called onipod deploy.sh here. So when you're saving this, ensure that you save it as all files. So if you're doing savers, ensure that you select um, all files there if you're doing that so i've already created this right but what all i needed to do for this is for example i can select um i want to play compot i can copy this deploy command and i'll just add it to a line and then go what parts do the same copy the command Go back to my script and then add it to another line and that's all i've done so far right but because i already have the script i'm not going to be doing the same thing again so two things i'm going to be changing in the script i'm going to be changing the ip address because the ip address for my server is this one so i'll make that modification here and i would be control h replace replace the current ip with this one so here's the current IP, Let's get rid of that and replace all. And then I'll be replacing the key also. So it needs this key. So let's go ahead and do it this. So what I'll do is I'll say I'll replace this existing key with this and I'll replace all. And this is the script that I'm going to use when I'm deploying my honeypot appliances in the different regions in Azure. What I'm going to do is, as part of that, I'll deploy a custom script extension to automatically deploy this different honeypot into them. So that once the, during the deployment process of the servers, they get the honeypot deployed into them and they'll start reporting back to the central server here. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, I'll go ahead and save this. Actually, before going ahead with that, what I'll do, because I'll be using this script, is I'll go ahead and save this script in an Azure storage account and then keep a copy of the URL for that. So let me go back to my Azure account now, go under my storage account. I'm not going to be creating a new storage account. I'll click on the existing one, go on the blob storage check if I have an existing container, which I do. If you don't have one, you can create one called whatever you want to call it. I created one called script and I already have this um, hosted on that. But what I'll do is I'll, because I've made some changes now, I'll select that and I'll overwrite the existing file. 
and I'll go ahead and upload that. So that'll provide the existing file. One thing I want to mention to you is when you're creating a new container, for example, it's going to ask you the public access level. I set mine to just blob only, not container. Uh, so I just set it to blob only, so only the blob part uh, will, um, will have access, right? So if I click cancel to that, so for this one, I can click on this and I can get the direct URL for my script over there. And again, this is just read access. I can read that and I can see the content there. So what I'll do is I'll make a note of this in Notepad. And I'll be using that during my deployment. So let's go. Let's go to new and I'll search for Ubuntu and again I'll select version 14.04 and I'll click on create so in this instance I'll be creating the first one so I'll show you a trick that I'll use here you don't have to use that trick if you're new to Azure you can just do this all manually it's all good so the name of the machine I'll be deploying I'll call it East US2 on port 01 so this will be in the east us2 region my username with my azure admin username and the password randomly generated password let's have those let's confirm i'll leave the description i'll put all of these in the same resource group so i'll use the existing resource group of the threat intelligence resource group um, that for the resource group, but the location of the machine itself, I don't want to be in the same location. I want this to be in East US2. So I'll change this to East US2. So in Azure, you can have resources in different location, um, but within a resource group that's in a different location. So I'll click OK to that. Now for the virtual machine size for this, I won't be selecting anything big. So I'll select a very small size of VM which is the one with 1 and 3.5 gig of RAM, which is DS1 V2. I'll select that. So majority of this I'll leave in the default. The only thing that I'll do is for now, because we're just doing a demonstration here, I'll set the uh, network security group to none. So no packet filtering. I'll set the monitoring to disabled also. I don't need all this. So all I'm going to be doing is deploying this into Azure into its own virtual network that's isolated with a public IP so it can communicate back and forth with the central MHN server. The last thing I want to add here is the extensions here because this is where I can add and say add a custom script extension, a custom script for Linux here. And if I go to create, I can select this file, the onipot deploy.sh file um, that I specified earlier, and then specify and say the first thing that this machine is going to do after deployment is going to run the script. I initially just deploy the different onipots um, that, that we already had it to the script. So I'll click OK to them. Um, I'll click OK again and then click OK to continue. And essentially what I've just showed you right here is what I'm going to do four more times. So because I won't bore you going through it one by one, I will be using a different trick to do it because I'll be using a template because what I'm going to be doing in my own case is before I deploy this, I'm just going to um, use template deployment you don't have to do this you can just do manually if you're not familiar again with Azure ham if you're not comfortable with that you don't have to but i'm comfortable enough to be able to use this so i'll use the azure ham template and what i'll do is uh, before i deploy this i'll just go get the template and I'll click on save to this. Actually, if I click save to that, what I'll do is on the custom script extension, I'll make some modifications. So custom script extension, this is 539. I'll call this 535 so that it's not going to conflict with the one I'm currently deploying. And I'll change the value of the machine. So 
I'll change this to something else. So I'll be deploying this in West Europe. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm just using this method to make it easier to deploy the four of them. You don't have to again, remember, put that in. So rather than specifying this URL also, I'll put in the URL uh, for the script file that I had in my storage account earlier. I'll put that in here under this URL. So leave it there and then click on save and then I'll just modify the parameters so it makes it much more quicker um, to deploy. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just kick start this one right and I'll pause the recording and I'll go ahead and do the same step that I've just showed you. I'll go ahead and do that three more times um, for the other ones. So I'll pause the recording and I'll be back once it's all completed. Hi. So I just wanted to show you what's going on during the deployment. So for example, as I'm doing the deployment now, I have four deployments going on um, in parallel. So I've got the deployment into the East US2 region, the deployment to the West Europe region, the deployment to the South East Asia region, and another into the West Central US region. So as these are deploying, you can see the components that they're deploying. If I do a refresh here, um, so, for example, the one for East US, you can see where it currently, it's currently finished deploying the machine and it's running the custom script that we um, provided. And it's the same thing here. Also, it's finished the deployment of VM, it's running the custom script. And the exact same thing um, with, so if I refresh this one, so it also finished deploying the VM, it's running the custom script. And then the last one, let's see where this is. So this is still deploying the VM. So as it's beginning to run the custom script, um, as each one pod begins to be deployed, they begin to report back to the MHN server. And let me show you what that looks like. If I go back to my MHN server here, I'm just under the default MHN server portal. And as you can see, instantly as the machine comes online, attacks are coming in from different places. And you can see what that looks like here almost instantly. And the weird place I can see my different sensors. If I go on the sensors, if I go on the view sensors here, and you can see the sensors as they're beginning to report back. So this is US. And as time goes on, all the other sensors, you begin to see them show up here and they be all begin to report back. So this is just still the East US um, Onipod with different honey pots that I'm deployed which is not compot what pot shock pot p0 have that are deployed and um they're beginning to report back and then if I go back on the again on the attacks I'm beginning to see the different attacks coming in um here if I go on the on the payloads uh, for example for the snot I can see the type of attack that's been detected um if it's whichever one I can go on there and it's going to display that and if I want another view I can go to MHN server it's going to show me another view another very useful one is this map over here if I right click on map and open map in a new tab it's really cool one if it's gonna come online oh okay yeah because map uses port 3000 so I need to specify it port 3000 actually you know what I'll just use HTTP for the map here and what you can see here is it's going to begin in, um, beginning begin to show where the different attacks are coming from and it's going to be using geolocation um, for the IP addresses to show where the different attacks are coming from and you can see this is currently in beta but it's cool once it's all fully functional you begin to see all this begin to pop up um, and begin to light up here. So what I'll do is again, and let's go back on the view sensors. Let's see. Yes, I can see others are reporting back. So West Europe is reporting back. Southeast Asia is reporting back. East US too. I don't think, I think the only one that's left is West Central US, which is the last one that I deployed. So that makes sense. So what I'll do is I'll just pause the recording again. At least you've seen what this looks like when the deployment is going on in Azure, right? As the deployment is going on, as it's deploying all these different on a pod, 
they're beginning to report back and you can see the moment the machines come online they have been hit by attack could be generic attack um, because no one at this point has known that this is your resource or maybe they do know that it's your resource uh, hopefully not specific attacks yet but at least you have visibility into the threats that are coming in which ones are eating your network where are they coming from you can begin to take this data and begin to work um, on this so I'll pause the recording and I'll be back once all the sensors are online okay so that took a while but finally everything is completed so you can see the four um, Honeypot servers have been fully deployed and if I go back and refresh the sensors you can see all the sensors are reported back in so the way the sensors work is you see the name of this originating server here and then the Honeypot and the specific only pot that we're putting back so for example it's us to the same one uh, you can see it's got snort it's got compot it's got what part and they, they are reporting different vulnerabilities that they are monitoring so what i can do is if i go on the attacks for example should be able to see and wow look at that so not necessarily that all these are all legitimate attacks some of them are just you know just normal scanning and um, port scanning which again if you lock down your network security group could reduce it a bit but what this can help you to see is gain more visibility into the kind of threats that get into your environment so maybe i should begin to apply that first level of threat protection uh, maybe things like network security group you should see this go down drastically uh, but then it also shows to you that um your network security groups are not sufficient right so you need an ips idea so something like sofos xg firewall something more advanced they can do more advanced threat protection and those kind of stuff for deep packet inspection shows you that you you still need this even if you're in your azure environment because you're able to um see like a visual visualized representation of the um threat so the other one I want to show you is on the map, um, which is hosted on port 3000. And if you look at that, it shows you which only port it's reporting and then uses geolocation to point out where that's coming in from. And as you can see, it's pointing out wherever any event occurs, where the event is coming from. And this is something that's live um, and, and it's a really cool and useful one. So again, as you begin to lock down your environment, you can be protect with NSG, protect with something like Sofos XG firewall, things, um, this begins to go down, right? Um, the last thing that I'd like to point out here is if I, not the last thing, um, maybe second to the last thing, is you can go under the main server here and then you can see um, top five attackers, um, top five attack parts, which parts have been targeted, um so for example this one is an interesting one for port 22 so ssh so for example that's from um korea and you know some of the things that this can help with is if i go on the chat So at some point this is going to populate the data so it's going to show so for example that's on kauri so mostly most, most likely that would be a brute force um, attack and you, you can see this because that's what kauri monitors so you you see um this if i go back to so on the mhn server you can see the top five only parts we cut up in the top one um and again not not necessarily the how this is a legitimate threat and top five attack signatures if i wanted to let's say remove a sensor from reporting i can go over here and i can just click on this button right here to delete and remove the um only part from reporting um i can also activate or deactivate certain rules so maybe if there's a rule that i've seen keeps being triggered as a false positive i can come here identify the rule search for it here and deactivate um, the rule if I wanted to um, I can I could also you know add other rule sources here if I wanted to um, so again with the payload I can see for example for snort IPS IDS what's what are the categories of attack or the signatures that have been detected can do the same for the others 
also and then finally we saw with the deployment that you can integrate this with um, other tools like Splunk which is a really cool thing and that's something that's really easy to do I'll leave a link in the description below that shows and uh, gives step-by-step -step guidance on how to do this so I hope this has been very informative for you um, I hope you find this very useful if you have any questions feel free to leave them below and I'll see you in my next video bye for now